of the Spirit. That's the message. Growing the fruits of the Spirit. You might be watching this on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. The message is loud and it's clear. How do you grow the fruits of the Spirit? Praise God. Hallelujah. How do you grow it? Jesus is speaking to us this morning. You shall know them, verse 16. By their fruits do men gather grapes of thorns or figs or thistles. The answer is no. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 to 17. Verse 17 says, even so, listen to this. Every, every, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Wow. Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth what? Evil fruit. Evil or bad. In some versions. Let's qualify this more. Let's let's qualify it again. The fruits of righteousness can be grown in Christians if believers can allow the Holy Spirit to sow this seed in us. We must allow the Holy Spirit. You cannot live by the wisdom of the world and expect to grow the fruits. Of righteousness. You can't. You cannot live by the wisdom of the streets and expect to grow the fruits of righteousness. Not possible. But when you live by the wisdom of God, you can so then grow the fruits of righteousness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Fruits of righteousness. By their fruits, Matthew chapter 7, 7 verse 16, we shall know them. By their fruits. A lot of people wander around all over the world. Whenever they hear deliverance, they are dead. Whenever they hear prophecy, they are dead. Whenever they hear uh, all kinds of things, they are dead. But the Bible says, by their fruits, you shall know them. And after a while, they will leave, they come back and say, oh, this is what happened, this, this, this. Why would you complain? You have not allowed the fruits of the Spirit to be sown in you. Neither have you allowed that which is sown by the Holy Spirit. You have not allowed it to grow. You've got to allow the fruits of the Spirit to grow in you. If the fruit of the Spirit is not growing in you, that's why you are not growing in the Spirit. Because the fruit is not growing. I will show you in the Bible again how you can grow the fruits of the Spirit. Let's look at it. Glory to God. When I joined church and became born again and began to serve as a minister, one of the first things I did as a vessel and as a child who loved to go to church to listen to the sermons to serve in the church was to listen to the word of God. Number one, let's look at it. Where is it? They allow the fruits of righteousness to grow by reading, listening, and applying the word of God. Listen to that. A N E. I mean L L. I mean R L A. Reading the word. L, listening to the word, a application of the word. You want to grow the fruits of the Spirit in you. You want to grow them? Yes, I want to grow them. I want the, the fruits that were mentioned in Galatians chapter 22, where we read. I mean, Galatians chapter 5, from verse 22 to 24, where we read. For those fruits to grow, R, L, A, reading. Listening and application of the word must be adopted. A lot of people, a lot of us, we don't read the Bible. We don't read the Bible. I was discussing with a minister, another pastor yesterday. And we're talking about the behavior of God's people around the world. Which does include ministers, pastors, apostles, and whatever title you hope. Everyone. 
And I opened a verse for this pastor to see because it was a strong disagreement. And what was the disagreement? The behavioral pattern of ministers and people of God. Especially displaced, I mean, uh, exposed on social media. And we looked at a, a, a verse in Second Chronicle, and this verse in Second Chronicle was I opened it and I it was about David, Uriah, and Bathsheba. We all are conversant with who David is, the king and the prophet of God. What happened between David, the prophet, Uriah, one of his armies and servants, and Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah? David. A prophet, a king, a messenger of God, killed Uriah. Directly or indirectly, he's not relevant. Because he is the one that ordered the death of Uriah. So that he can take the wife of Uriah, Bathsheba. You see that? And he took the wife of Uriah, the wife's name is Bathsheba, from the poor man Uriah. And killed the poor man Uriah, ordering Joab his commander to put Uriah in the forefront of the battle so that the army, the enemies can kill him. And exactly that was what happened. Uriah was his life in the forefront of the hot battle. And immediately David took Beersheba, the wife of Uriah. A prophet, a minister of God, a messenger of God, and a king. And the Lord told David, that's where I'm going this morning. That because of your deeds, David King, because of your deed, that's what God told David. You have created an occasion, I'm quoting the Bible, for my enemies to blaspheme against me. Now, take note. Because of your deed, God is speaking to his servants, God is speaking to his people. Because of your deed means the behavior of David, killing Uriah, taking the wife of Uriah. David exposed God to the enemies of God, for the enemies of God to blaspheme against David. And God told David, the child born to you and Bathsheba shall die as a result of that. But you will not die. It reminds me of the Bible. The sins of the father are visited upon the children, the third and fourth generation. So, the little innocent child died because of the deeds of messengers of God. And that's why, as a child of God, you've got to take this RLA reading, number one, listening, number two, and what application, apply the word to your life. The fruits of righteousness can't grow without reading, listening, and application. It can't grow. There's no magic to it. You cannot be whom the Lord wants you to be if you don't read and you don't listen to him and you don't apply his word to your life. Number two, walking not in the counsel of the ungodly. You find that in Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Because it's a short Bible studies, I'm not going to be reading that verse. But you can read it on your own personal studies when you get home, because it's a Bible study. Psalm chapter 1, 1 to 3. He clearly said, we should not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. One of the things that disallow the fruits of righteousness from growing is companionship. Who are your friends? Show me your friends and I will tell you who you are. Companions. Who are they? I used to have when we were really, really full and big before the shutdown and all this menace of coronavirus and all of that. I used to have one member there who when they call me about their marriage crisis, guess what she'll be telling me? I said, who are the friends that gave me the advice? He said, oh, this friend, Sister Beatrice. So I said, are they married? He said, no. I said, hey. So you are married. <laughs> and guess who is your counselor? 
an unmarried woman. Counseling you who is born again and they are not born again. They never go to any church. They have never sat under any anointing. They have never been taught by Jesus. They have never sat at the feet of Christ like the disciples did in the Bible. They've learned nothing and they are your counselor. They have no qualification in counseling. Neither have they gone to any university or college as to say, okay, at least they qualify by their knowledge that they are your counselor. Yeah. Your counsel, those you keep around you, matters a lot. Defines the direction of your life. Determines your achievements. Determines the goals that you are able to actualize in life. Walk not in the counsel of the God. Number three. Allow the Holy Spirit to be your guide and help. And that's the problem in the church today. The difference between an unbeliever and a believer is the Holy Spirit. The difference between one who loves God and one who does not love God is the Holy Spirit. Do you know, before you make any decision, have you ever consulted with the Holy Spirit? Consultation with the Holy Spirit merely means making decisions that are in consonance with the Word of God. Are your decisions in consonance? In alignment, 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 alignment. Or the decisions you make in life are completely the opposite. They negate the Word of God. The importance of allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you and teach you cannot be overemphasized. Number four, I'll move on because of time. Renouncing any lifestyle that glorifies the world. <laughs> Take note of this. This is very important. This is about the very most important. Renouncing lifestyle that glorifies the world. Habits, etc. What is your lifestyle? James chapter 4, verses 4. Let's read. I would like to read this. James chapter 4, verse 4. Let's look at it. James 4, 4. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Allowing the fruits of righteousness to grow in you. That's the message. Or growing the fruits of righteousness. Amen. Growing the fruits of what? Righteousness. Ye adulterers. James chapter 4 verse 4. Ye adulteresses, Know ye not. That the friendship. Of the world. Did you get that? Or the friendship with the world. Is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of this world is the enemy of God. James 4. Do we qualify it much more than this? I don't think so. Does, does this verse need more qualification? No. It's in plain English. The friendship of the world, or with the world, in some of the version NLT and ESV and all of that, the friendship with in those that's what is more straightforward than of the friendship with the world is enmity with God. It doesn't need any qualification. Amen. It doesn't need any qualification. Number five. Identify. With good mentors and role models. Hey, come on, come on, look at that. Identify with what? Good mentors and role models. Success is duplicated. Take note of this today. Success is what? Duplicated. Can be duplicated. Should be duplicated. That's 
why our children need to be in the church. Our role model is Jesus. And why is he Jesus? He came to this earth to set an example for you and for me, for you and for you and me to follow. Why did Jesus come? One of the reasons why Jesus came to this earth is to set an example for everyone that believes. So Jesus is our role model. I was talking yesterday again in the same meeting yesterday with this with a man of God as well. And we talked about role models and mentors in, re in respect to social media. When I see a lot of things in, on the social media, amen, amen, by vessels and people of God, I always ask, who are their role models? Listen to me. For me to do something on social media, amen, amen. maybe let's say a wedding or a birthday party, celebration who is my role model who did that that i saw in the bible no no you are on social media you're writing a check of hundred thousand and showing it to the world is the check you are giving to this person as a minister of god how uh, what listen to me what example are we laying down for our children what do you think the 18 years old, 19, 20, and 21 would think about the church? A money spilling machine. Simple. Let's go and open the church. And that's why you see big titles and all of that all over the world today. Children who just woke up, they had no role model, nobody trained them, they have no church that they say they attended and learned Bible. Nothing. And they wake up and say, okay, they are now prophet. So, 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 so. And they will be on Facebook prophesizing. I saw your mother yesterday. I saw your mother. I saw your mother. It, it, you know, there is a cancer in the body of, you know, false prophecies. Fake prophecies. Why? Because of role model issues. We must be an example to the world. Our life. You rather criticizing what has been the solution you have come up with concerning God's kingdom. We must be the role model. Being an example means being a solution. Be a solution. In your workplace, be a solution. In your business environment, be a solution. In your home, be a solution. In your marriage, be a solution. Don't be the problem. Don't be the instigator of the problem. Be a crisis manager. Be a solution. Role models. I say it again. I say it again. Jesus is our role model. Before I make decisions, I look at my role model. Even in anger, I will go back on my anger because of my role model. I feel sorry because of my role model. And that should be the mindset of the people of God. Amen. Number six, as we finish the Bible studies. Kill the love of money or the love of money will kill you. The love of money or the love of money will what kill you? Simple. Does it need qualification? Come on. Does it need qualification? The love of money is the root of all evil. The fruits of righteousness cannot grow in a believer if a believer loves money. Because when you love money, what happens? <laughs> Look at the world. The world loves money. They kill to make the money. 
The steal to make the money. The rob to make the money. The cheat the, to make the money. The love of money can kill. So, but when you kill it, it will no more be able to kill you. And that was what Jesus told the rich man. Sell all your belongings. Share it to the poor. And the key of the kingdom will be given to you. In other words, you will enjoy eternal life. And the rich young man was so sad because he was so rich in substance. And he walked away sad because he loved his money more than he loved God. The love of money can stunt the growth of the fruits of the Spirit that the Holy Spirit had sowed in you. What is the qualification? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Being born again. That's the qualification. We are born again. I am born again. Thank Jesus. I don't think anyone here in the church is not born again. Because it's a Bible believing church. Amen. Amen. Now, if you are born again, you should allow the fruit of, the, of righteousness sown in you. Because the day you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, you might be watching on Facebook or you will be watching it. Accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior guarantees you the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus told the disciples, if I don't go away, listen to this, Jesus told the disciples, if I don't go, the Holy Spirit cannot come. So Jesus had to go. And Jesus now told the disciples, and I will send you a helper. And that's the Holy Spirit. He will teach you all things, guide you, help you, be with you till when the close of age. I'm quoting the Bible. So the qualification for receiving the Holy Spirit is being born again. And the moment you're born again, the Spirit indwells in you. That's why the Bible says, and your body becomes what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. So this Holy Spirit indwells in you. And from that moment, the Spirit begins to move you towards the direction of what? Righteousness. By sowing in you the seed of what? Righteousness. Can we clap for Jesus? 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 Sowing the seed of righteousness. Growing the fruits of righteousness. Through this message today, one of the things I will advise you is surrender your heart to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do you know where the Spirit, where the, what Satan fights for? In us, Satan fights for our thoughts, the mind. The battle is in the mind. I want you to listen to this. The battle is in the mind. So if your thoughts are evil, your thoughts will stunt. Stunting means not allow. It will stunt the growth of the fruits of righteousness. Now, if your thoughts are not evil, but your thoughts are negative because there's evil thoughts, there's negative thoughts, and guess what? There's good thoughts. So, if your thoughts are not evil, because evil thoughts, evil thoughts stunts the growth of the fruits of a righteousness of righteousness, then your thoughts might be negative thoughts. When you hear the word of God, your thought is always negative. When you hear the 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 the, the, the prophecies. Of God, your thoughts are negative towards it. When you come across the things of the Spirit, your thoughts are negative towards it. Now, the Bible clearly said in the book of Hebrews, this 
message was preached unto them and unto us. But because they mixed it not with faith, guess what? The Bible said it profited them not. Simple. I will quote it again. This same message was preached unto them and unto us. Because they mix it not by faith, it profited them not. Look it up in the Bible. So, negative thought attracts negativity. Whenever your thoughts are always negative, all you get is negativity. It won't allow you to move forward. It won't allow the glory of God to rest upon you. It won't allow the plan and purpose of God to manifest. It wouldn't allow you to be empowered. Listen, it's all in the Bible. Look at the story of Caleb. Look at the story of Joshua. Two of them. And the twelve spies that were sent to spy out the kingdom of Jericho. Only two came back with a good report. The rest spies came back with a negative report. Because their thoughts were negative. They were not evil people. No, they're born again. <laughs> they're born again. They're really born again. They love God. They've been serving under Moses. They've been going in and out of wars with Moses. They came out of Egypt successfully. So they're born again. The only problem was that their thoughts are negative. They came with a negative report. No, we look like grasshoppers. In other words, we're too small. There are giants in the land. We cannot conquer that land. Negativity. But Caleb, Joshua, say no, 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 no. Let's go instantly and possess it. It's our possession. God has given it up to us. Even though there were giants in the land. In reality, the report of the other Spies were correct. They were giants in the land. They never lied. They said the truth. The other thing is that they're negative. Avoid negativity. Praise God. Your actions and your confessions. What do you confess? Even over your children. What are your confessions? Your confessions stunt the growth of the fruits of righteousness in you. What do you confess? Always listen to your confessions. What are you saying? Because your confession. Now, hear this. I want you to hear this. Even on TV. Your word is your word. Your word is your word. If you want to build your word, it is your word that will build your word. If you want to destroy your word, it is your word that will destroy your world. So therefore means confession can either be positive or negative. So what are your confessions? There are people that will come and say, ah, my God. Are you sure you can do this? You can buy this home? Are you sure you can buy this car? You shut them up. Shut them up. It's not by power. It is not by might. But by what? My spirit saith the Lord. That's the answer. All things are possible to them that what? Believe. Live by confessing positive things over the lives of your children, over your own life, over your workplace. Over the land that you are standing upon, confess positive things. Land, you must release my blessings. Land, you must release my breakthrough. Land, you must release everything that I'm owed in this nation. Positive confession. Everywhere I step my foot, that's what the Lord told Joshua to confess. Wherever I step my foot upon, confession, I possess. I can do all things through Christ who what strengthens me. Positive confession. Then the fruits of righteousness will begin to grow in you. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's appreciate the Lord.
Let's bless him this morning. Let's adore him. Lift up your hands and begin to worship. Father, we thank you. King of glory, we bless you. Lord, oh Lord, we give you all the glory. Thank you for the message today, growing the fruits of righteousness. Lord, you have made it possible. 